Do it, do it again. It didn't. It, it. You it, improv it, too it, much, it, hamster. It dropped your desktop audio for that, so it just looked like Aaron just mouthing into air for no reason. <laughs> great. Which, which honestly, I think is funnier. Great, great. All right, take two. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. three. Hello, everybody. I'm Aaron, the painter. <laughs> Wonderful. I wish we could cut to you and then I say the same thing. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, okay. Hamster, will you get your hand on screen like a sock puppet kind of thing? <laughs> All right. Aaron, will you please yeah, uh, sure. go ahead and take away? Hello, hello, everybody. I'm Hamster. Is that Joe Manganello doing a squirrel? <laughs> All right. So, oh. hello everybody. <laughs> this is Chris. Oh, Indeed. Oh, oh, we got I'm the Bilbo. Hobbit in. I'm Bilbo. <laughs> and Bilbo. <laughs> we're we're gonna go ahead and start our final painting stream yeah. of Wildlands. Yeah. We have both Already Aaron and the other Aaron hamster on. Uh, very excited. Do you guys want to go ahead and introduce Ooh. what pieces you're gonna be doing? We'll start with you, Aaron. Sure. Uh, today we're gonna be painting. Um, a little bit of forest and a little bit of swamp. I've got one of each here. Um, and it's just, we're just gonna go through like how both of the schemes are very similar. Um, and that's it, just keeping it simple and just showing you guys like what the full process entails. Excellent. And then Hamster, do you wanna go ahead and introduce what you're gonna be doing? I wish I could. Uh, this is what I call <laughs> Eli's tree. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's the Quildren. The Quildren. Yeah. Quildren tree. Quildren. It's, a, it's another cool accent tree. It's kind of like the the opposite of the black rot tree. It's a very bright, magical fey tree. Um, what's nice is the prototype has the canopies separate, which will make it easier to paint. So that's kind of nice. So we'll start. Cool. Well, that's what I've got over here. Hey, uh, Hamster, you're a, you're a theater kid, right? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen Have you ever seen that play? Which one? All my children. <laughs> okay. Well, that's it, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, All oh. right. Um, so it looks like you've already started a little bit of your process, Aaron. Do you want to walk through what you've done before the stream started for everyone? Yeah, so just to cut some time since it takes a long time to... Um, base coat, do the first step, and like get in all the, the holes and and stuff is um, the shallow water green step. So basically any part that's um, vegetation or moss, um, you, you, I just painted with like an opaque layer of the shallow water green. And what would you say to avoid in this step specifically? Um, I mean, you don't have to, yeah, there is one thing to avoid um, because these are, because you don't want to go over with the base color again. Rocks are fine to, to hit, but um, dirt and trees, if you avoid those, um, that would be ideal, because then you'd have to like mix the base color um, and go over it. Splendid. Yeah. And Hamster, it looks like you started on a process for the Quildren tree. Quildren. Quildren. Hey, Hamster. If you're talking, we can't Sorry, hear. I was muted uh, because I live on a busy street, so I don't want you to hear the motorcycles that drive by every 20 minutes. Um, yes, I am uh, starting with a base of uh, deep lava. It's still like earthy and brown, but it has a lot of red in it. So it kind of, to me, gives it that sort of uh, colorful, mystical start right off the bat. Uh, so it's a good foundation. Deep lava is the color that I discovered in Hellscape. It was, uh, I had done part of Caverns Deep, I had done Plague Stone, and uh, so I was starting to get familiar with like the paints and everything and the process, but I hadn't, I didn't know about Deep Lava yet, and Hellscape I was like, oh my god, this is one of my favorite colors. <laughs> and so a lot of the red starts with Deep Lava, I tinted it a little more red in Hellscape, but uh, I, I 
grew to love this color. So I'm starting it off here. Any brown that's like a little off from a neutral straight brown, I like using is, in a fantasy and fantasy stuff. It's pretty rusty. Yeah, yeah. Reminds me of a few so cars we'll... I once drove. <laughs> yeah, so it'll work for a lot of things like that. It just puts it on the color wheel a little bit as opposed to just being like dirt. Uh, Rabbit wants to know if you've had any fire engines today. Uh, none today. Probably some I haven't noticed because I, uh, I live right around the corner from the fire station, so I, I'm just used to it now. Can you so give I'm us sure the exact be... address, actually? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, station number, uh, yeah, I don't even know. Uh, Method Man's in here. He's wondering what the mix for the base Dwarvenite color is. Uh, it's a combination. It's one-third base gray, one-third black, one-third, um, earthstone... And then one nine. <laughs> um, actually, I don't remember the exact ratios, but it's it's yeah one nine uh, school bus, uh, and then the same amount of uh, deep lava. Yeah, you know how it's like when you were a kid, <laughs> you, when you were a kid and you go to like McDonald's or something to the soda fountain and you just fill it up with every flavor. Yeah. You just do that. <laughs> you do that with the Bacorni paints, and then yeah. you're good. I like that. That makes sense to me. Uh, Aaron, are you using moss green right now? Or? Yeah, I'm using moss green to just do a uh, dry brush with a, a, a big uh, fluffy brush over everything that's green. Painting your hellscape while watching? I, do, I don't, I'm gonna have to do that eventually. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't even opened mine yet. I'm, I'm saving it for a, a hardcore painting marathon weekend or something. I sent it to my dad so that I don't like I'll do it when I when I get there, but I don't have to look at it till I get there. That's good. Wait, is yours unpainted too, Mace? Huh? Yeah, is I got it unpainted. unpainted. Yeah. Oh man. This was right after I did a painting class, so I was feeling very confident. And then <laughs> I don't know. It seemed complicated, but simple enough that I could do it. But now I'm kind of like, it's not really how simple the paint is. It's how many pieces you get. Yeah, honestly, it's 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 that on top of like the fact that the first stuff I decided to like pick to paint was translucent yeah. is uh I think that was a mistake translucent is hard man because if you miss a if you miss a little tiny section it's gonna bleed right through the light the light will yeah you have to I was, be I'm oh, sorry when I was doing that uh that fountain uh or the the latest one with the uh, the vault with that sweet design for the light to go through, I painted over it so many times I was stabbing, <laughs> literally taking my brush overhand and just stabbing it in the corners. <laughs> That's what you have to do though. Like sometimes yeah. it's like pieces can have these kind of nooks and crannies that are actually like almost impossible to get to without being like really aggressive. And I was shining my phone light through it to make sure that I could like see where but then I'd been staring at it too long, and I looked up and saw spots because I was just staring into a, a light for <laughs> like 20 minutes. Ah, uh, no Higher. hellscape in the UK or Sweden. Yeah, the, the, the hellscape's got to be getting there soon. Yeah, we we probably got ours especially because it's unpainted. <laughs> it usually ships a little earlier. That's fair. This that's a secret. Uh, Rabbit says he's he loves watching these, knowing that he doesn't have to paint his. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is it rabbit like constantly trying? <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Trying to hire you out, Aaron. Uh, yeah, for a while there. Not anymore. Um, well, I think one of the first painting streams I did, he s said something. All right, but yeah. Commissions are closed. <laughs> <laughs> do you He's... do commission work? Me? Either of you. I uh, I haven't yet. I haven't uh, painted anybody's stuff, but That's it'd be neat to try out. I think it would have a different feeling, you know. But it, yeah. I'd be it'd be fun to try, especially like an army scheme. I think would be cool. I'm I'm really interested in like making really efficient uh, batch like processes and see how they work. I'm how sure after I paint the first army, I'll regret that. But how much would you charge for like I don't know an entire hellscape? <laughs> You're a, a very specific to you, huh, Mace? No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm spitballing. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Like, uh, it would be based on the amount of time, I guess, that it would take. So I'd have to look at it and anticipate. Mm -hmm. 
Oh man. Does I don't it... know. What's the what's the difference between the unpainted set and the painted set? Maybe it'd be that. The fact that you're doing it for a good friend. <laughs> the 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 hamster the hamster paint charity drive. Yeah. <laughs> we have for premium carrots for Aaron to do our dread hollow. Uh, <laughs> premium carrots. I don't like carrots. It's not my vegetable of choice. Oh man. No, I love carrots. I'm lying. <laughs> I prefer celery though. Okay. But, yeah, you, you gotta upsell. You gotta like, you know, negotiate higher. So you're like, let's let's make it steamed carrots. Ooh. <laughs> you know, freshly steamed. Carrot cake even. Ooh. Mmm. Yeah, go steamed real carrots. Deluxe. <laughs> let's see. Well, Rabbit's upset about you saying you don't like, uh, you don't like <laughs> oh, carrots. Oh, no. Ooh, Rabbit Burner. I'm curious about why Rabbit Burner also, like, do you, are you a rabbit that smokes? Are you, like, do you burn rabbits? Like, what's going on? A human that burns rabbits. Is the ra are the rabbits being burned, or are they doing the burning? Yeah. I guess is the main question. Like, what's going on? Hey, Finley's here. And in the left lane, we have the green brush pulling ahead. <laughs> Actually, yeah, Aaron can see what Hamster's doing, but Hamster can't see what Aaron's doing. So yeah, I can't a, see anything. There's a distinct uh, advantage here. For the Hamster Hobby Corner, are we going to do blindfolded challenges? Oh, God. <laughs> I, is that... Are there people who can paint blindfolded and, like, I'm, not have it look terrible? I'm sure they're out there. Well, there's elephants that, it. like, finger paint, so maybe yeah, we can. Yeah, they're not blind. Elephants don't have fingers. <laughs> No, but they, like, use their trunk to paint, and it's actually really nice. My cousin went skydiving blind. <laughs> what? <laughs> they, they just walked by, he's like, my cousin went skydiving blind. My cousin went skydiving Oh, yeah, you told me yeah, that. Yeah, that's fine. You don't yeah. have to be able to see to fall. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Gravity works whether you notice it or not. You better hope you know when to pull that cord, though. <laughs> Yeah, you just give it your best guess. <laughs> You're like, now? Immediately? Uh, practice makes perfect, I guess. Aaron's paint is going a lot faster than the Titan's toothpaste I did. Yeah, well, she's also painted a lot of these. Yeah. Uh, it's weird, though. Like, on stream, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm doing this for the... It feels like I'm doing it for the first time. Like, I'm like, it didn't look like this. But I've done, like, so many of them. But it just, like, I don't know. <laughs> it feels different. <laughs> I get that. Uh, blind people can paint, so I'd assume so. Yeah, that's probably true. I guess I was thinking people who normally can see with a blindfold on. I feel like it's a different thing than oh, somebody who is... it would be different. Is... But, like, yeah. I feel like it's kind of like how you do those challenges where it's like you draw without looking at it, and then you see and you have a totally morphed face or something. I just think it would be fun to see a mini after, like, not... Like, painting it based only on feel, which would also be messy, but fun. Can we have a chill vibes with Aaron channel? Well, you could just uh, put the Joy Dwarven painting... Uh, videos on repeat, I suppose. <laughs> Question, do you use a sealant on your Dwarvenite? Uh, we don't, right? We do not. Uh, Sometimes on the prototypes we'll do a little spray just because they're getting knocked around a lot over <laughs> photography and builds and stuff, but in general for your personal stuff, if you, you know, treat it nicely, it's, it's, uh, and it's on actual Dwarvenite, most of the prototypes aren't Dwarvenite. Uh, so we sometimes give them a quick spray, but not always. Yeah, especially, at least for the paint masters, because they're usually sitting around at the factory yeah. for a long time. Rabbit Burner says that it's a position like Shaman for the Flaming Bunny Clan. The, the Rabbit Burner is Spokes Rabbit for the Legomorph Hive Mind of the Flaming Bunny Clan. So there you go, it all makes sense. Rabbit that smokes yeah. sweet, got it. <laughs> <laughs> so how does Rabbit the factory... Lore. How does the factory paint the items as opposed to these fine artists? Fast. Yeah, very fast. Um, sometimes with a stencil, depending on what it is. Uh, they don't, we use uh, high flow acrylic and they use like a lacquer that they then like set the pieces out in the sun. Um, and Which it makes the paint pretty durable. Yeah, and but it, sometimes it gets, yeah, it, it like it is pretty du durable. Um, what else? Have I, either of you ever tried a lacquer? Uh, not on... Uh, I hardly know her. I, <laughs> I think for the crystals in Caverns Deep, they wanted something. They didn't understand what iridescence was, the oh. interference paint. So we went out and got like a iridescent um, oil paint because we thought that would be closer um, than the, the high flow acrylic. 
And I guess it helped him a little bit understand, like, what it is. Hmm. Uh, I've never uh, used lacquers, but part of me would kind of be interested to try it to get a sense of, like, what it's like when they're painting it at yeah. the factory. So I, I'd be w kind of open to testing it out. Uh, Aaron, we got a question for you. Uh, have you finalized the unicorn paint scheme? <laughs> uh, st I'm grinding the midnight oil, trying to <laughs> figure it out. Grinding the I'm, midnight oil. Yeah, whatever that race is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the I'm doing the top half and Hamster's doing the bottom half of it. Yeah. It's uh, like an actual it's team. Wait, so when you say top half and bottom half of a unicorn, do you mean like <laughs> the front half and the back half? Okay. Uh, I was gonna say like you're just painting like the chest up and he's painting all the feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're they're gonna be different schemes. It's gonna be alt schemes on Ooh, half yeah. of the unicorn. It, yeah. it fell into like a pool of uh <laughs> like Darkness. And oh, it's like yeah. dark. Caps, it's like, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Still in the testing phase. Yeah. Uh, Seraphis, as far as the hollow hedge pack goes, so we're we're at our limit when it comes to uh, skews. Uh, if we could, we would have like basically every piece in like a pack of its own. If we could, um, it's just. We have to work with like what the factory gives us. Uh, for hollow, so we we have been talking about how we can arrange some skews better. I'm not expecting the hollow hedge to get its own thing, but maybe we can find a an easier way. Uh, maybe we can find a way to like make it easier to get in a different pack or something. Um, but I'll bring that up. Like we've got we've got a couple things people have been requesting uh, to be able to get more easily, and so we've been talking about how we can do that. What uh, color are you doing the leaves, Hamster? Uh, so it's starting out with a base of deep water green. There's quite a bit of blue in it, which again gets us to sort of that mystical feeling because it ends up being progressive dry brushes of just lightening this up and letting it be sort of a pastel sort of almost minty uh, blue-green. Mm, minty. Ooh, yeah, if you were gonna, if what Dwarven Forge piece looks the most delicious? Like, which would you try to bite into? <laughs> mm. The one that you, that you just did, the, the, what, the one that I said where the green looks kind of velvety, and it's that big, it's uh, like the orange tips. Yeah, it kind of, like, has a... It kind of looks like a giant gourd or something, or yeah. like a some kind of apple or pumpkin. So I get that. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'd put the glamour leaf in a salad. Yeah, the, <laughs> it would be one of those like edible flowers. Like, yeah, salad. that'd be like cotton candy flavored or something. Oh man, cotton candy lettuce would be amazing. <laughs> make make you eat your veggies. Huh? Also, I'm not gonna lie. Some of the lava looks delicious. Like that was one of Aaron's like design like like, like, like the lava flows. <laughs> Like 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 the lava flows, kind of like yeah, they kind of like a guy like a cheese fondue thing going on. <laughs> it's got like layers, feels like kind of viscous. Oh, I wasn't going for that, but okay. <laughs> you weren't going for Velveeta? No. Huh. Oh, I thought that was the entire. I thought that was the entire thing. It was supposed to be the Velveeta. <laughs> There's got to be somebody who's like homebrewed like a like some kind of tyrant in the hells or something named Velveeta. That's got to exist. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know it was Hellscape until after. I thought we were just doing a fondue kind of. I, th no. I thought we just got sponsored by, by yeah, by Kraft or yeah. something. Turns out we're not sponsored. We have no sponsors. <laughs> uh, a couple things. Is Aaron Thor named for Aaron? Survey I don't says. No, I don't think so. But it was. <laughs> if it was, was if, if it was, it was done without your permission. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely not. Because I think I've Stephon, always wondered that. I think Stefan created. I don't know when he created it, but I remember just being like, why is it called Aaron Thor when it worked here or whatever? Because <laughs> it's such a, ra it, it, it's like a cool sounding name, but it's so like random that I was like, oh, I don't know. I never asked him. Um... Maybe it's like prophecy for hamster, you know? Because like he's also named Aaron, so it's not named after you. <laughs> Maybe it's named after him. The hamster <laughs> of mine. <laughs> Of the Arenthor Mountains. Ah, oh, the tunnel system. Yeah, like little, little hamster tunnels. Exactly. Wait, so the burrows weren't made for hamster? They were. Oh, okay. 
Um, I was right when I came, I guess, in caverns. Uh, Hamster, did you already have that Archon, or did you paint it specifically for Saturday night? You painted it specifically for that, right? For that stream? painted it specifically for Joe. I did it overnight, because uh, Nate was like, hey, do this if you have time, and of course I didn't have time. So instead of sleeping, I painted that, and it was a lot of fun to paint, because I wasn't doing it for, you know, a factory thing or anything. I was just painting a miniature, and it was a, a lot of fun. There was a lot of armor on it. It's a cool model, and it, I was pumped to see it, Joe watch him bounce around the wildlands, so that was a fun project. It felt more like a hobby night than uh, work. Uh, why is Aaron painting the vegetation first? In the videos for Dread Hollow Stones, uh, stones were first, I thought. Uh, oh. For this one, well... Did you forget? <laughs> no, 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 no. Gotcha. It was... <laughs> God. Um, Got her. No, I, I discovered a lot of things from, like, kind of revamping and, like, simplifying the paint scheme. Um, in the original Dread Hollow, I paint the stones first, but then like I wouldn't, I wasn't able to like dry speed dry brush all the vegetation, which makes it go. Turns out makes it go much quicker. Um, so this was just like a simplified thing that I discovered while trying to like simplify the paint. Um. Yeah, what step is happening for dry brush on the forest now? So basically, it is you're taking moss green, right? No, I, um, I'm going in with another dry brush, uh, so it's not, because I found the, the moss green by itself was too, like, too vibrant and too yellow, and also this, this dry brush helps it, helps um, uh, this paint scheme be backwards compatible with the uh, original Dread Hollow. So it's just a layering of two um, different green dry brushes. This one's more of a minty one, and the other one's moss, just so, like, it gives it um, more dimension is uh is this is this green a, a mix or is that out of the bottle yeah this is a mix it's um cavern dry brush uh deep water green and a little bit of moss green excellent Archon! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's like he's really here. Wow. Uh, was that was that Joe Manganiello himself? That was that was Joe. He was Again, I can't see anything. <laughs> that, I was, that, that poor hamster. That he's was just that going was, off of like voices. Yeah, that that, that, that was flawless role play. That was Erin. She did her. Impression. Oh wow. That was yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. What a performance. Yeah, the eyes like rolled back in her head. It was really kind of terrifying. <laughs> it's the uh, only impression that I can do. Yeah. <laughs> It's this Archon. <laughs> yeah. um, Joe as Archon. Yeah. <laughs> I can only do Joe doing Archon. It's my <laughs> one skill. Um, what, uh, what, what are the ratios on that green mix, if you remember? Uh, I believe it's around one part cavern, um, one part uh, deep water green, and then half as much of the moss green. But don't don't quote me on it. Like, <laughs> uh, oh god, I've already I've that's already put it on Wikipedia. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's it already. It is definitely a play it by ear, especially like when you're doing a lot of pieces. Sometimes if there's a little variance, it actually like kind of works in your favor. It looks more like nature if there's yeah. slight wavering. And I I really like to go off like swatches and comparing like pieces. Like a lot of time I'll I'll just keep comparing it to finished ones. Um, Something about the, it's really hard to quantify the ratios sometimes because like then if you spill too much paint out then you have to remember like how much you spilled out before and then you have to compensate for it. So I, I like matching swatches but I'll definitely like put together ratios when um, like we make a Joy Dorman painting video for this. So, Hamster, you started with lava red on the tree. Now you're going over it with some kind of like lighter brown. What, what is yeah, this? Yeah, it's uh, our terracotta dry brush, which is very orangey brown. So we're already going into, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of, of unusual colors. Again, in the earthy realm, but pretty far on the red side, pretty far on the orange side, and getting away from just the straight browns and greens. Uh, giving it that magical, eventually that magical effect. We're gonna go, the, uh, the key to this tree, spoiler, is going all the way to acid yellow, which is like almost fluorescent. Yay. So. Uh, 
Has the factory ever had trouble matching your paint schemes? <laughs> yes. Uh, so, speak, so speaking of Dread Hollow. Yeah. When, when you see us, like, painting these, what often happens uh, by the end is we'll go back and forth with a factory and sort of, like, sometimes eliminate steps or change steps to get it down. Someone asked how the factory paints them. You know, they, they we're doing a, a handful of these, sometimes a large handful, but they're just cranking them out wide. The hundreds, thousands, right? So uh, they really have to nail it down. One extra tiny step can mean many extra hours over a thousand pieces. So there's a there's a back and forth when we finally before we settle on the final scheme that they're gonna execute. Yeah, and it's also a lot of like thinking about like if it's backwards compatible with things, like making sure that it matches previous sets. Um, it's just a lot to consider, like going back and forth with the the factory. And sometimes even after I paint it, because <clears throat> when you're producing like the first copy of something, you might be trying a lot of things. You might repaint something a few times. And sometimes you look at it and you're like, this looks cool, but I think I can do it and uh, without one of these steps. And you might change things around uh, even yourself before it gets to the factory just with to have efficiency in mind. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, what are you using for the stones here? Is that just a It's mostly, paint? um, it's mostly base gray, but the base gray for the stone in Aaron Thor base is too light. Um, so I darkened it up with a little bit of earth stone, black, um, and I also put in some of the basal blue because I noticed the earthstone base casting color has a, uh, a, 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 like a bluish tint to it. Um, I don't know the exact ratios, but yeah, it's, it's made of those colors. How much does a factory worker paint in a day? Uh, I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Probably faster than we end up painting here, but th again, it's because they have to get through a bunch compared to, uh, you guys getting to like focus on like really nailing details on a couple. And stencils. And... Yeah. But I imagine, like, yeah, because it's... When you think about just how many... Even, like, even just having, like, a couple thousand backers, when you think about how many pieces that actually means, and all of those having to go through that factory, it, it's, it's really staggering, like, how much they have to produce. And so, you know, you talk about, like, uh, taking the better part of a year to, like, get the pieces out there. But when you think about how many of those pieces need to be made, and the like, the casting process and the painting process, it's it's a lot of hours. Uh, what I was just thinking about here is uh, with this dry brushing is something that I've I've learned a lot from Erin. She uses this really well. Where I'm still doing the same color, and I'm trying to make some areas slightly brighter, but the transparency of the paint is such that like you can get different variations of the color using the same paint and you don't always need to do a new mix. Uh, and I, I especially saw that in Aaron's scheme for Dread Hollow on the moss with some of the moss green dry brushing where like you can get some of that cool variation uh, across a floor or something without a brand new paint. And uh, it's something she said to me before I designed the ruins paint, which is the first terrain sector that I painted. And she said, you know, try to do it without mixing and see what you can do and uh, I've held that in my heart since oh, and I appreciate that that's so nice now yeah, fight. I, forgot, I forgot that oh. like you kind of like described something that like I knew but I didn't like knew, know I knew or whatever um, <laughs> but yeah it's kind of like a like a to like making a tonal drawing like you could just the more pigment that comes off in the dry brush, like the lighter it gets and you can like control um, where you put the paint and like make it look like you're using like multiple colors. Yeah. Yeah. When did you all start painting the pieces you've been shooting pics and videos for for the Kickstarter? I mean, you've been painting these pieces um, for a while. Yeah. yeah, one of the, one of the first pieces I did was the sorrow nest, and I literally I feel it, I, I feel like that was like two years ago. It wasn't, <laughs> but it was like I don't know, February or something, January. It was like ages ago. It feels like. Wait, wasn't it 
sooner than that too because wasn't that in the pathfinder sarnus Sarnus? wasn't in pathfinder no it it, it was it may have been earlier though you may be right that was like one of the first it doesn't to me it doesn't even feel like part of this kickstarter because it was still in some of the the down times where it's like hey when you have a chance we got this sculpt in i was like oh cool (laughs) <laughs> and, like it wasn't you know the crazy times yet uh does the factory paint <coughs> <laughs> does the factory uh do all the painting by brush or do they use airbrushes and such i wish they used airbrushes i've been practicing with my airbrush doing a bunch of cool stuff but i don't think they have the thing actually is uh when you're doing a small project the airbrush is really uh, fast and efficient but i've actually tried to use it for a prototype painting and it's such a finicky thing like across so many pieces that like the clogging and the cleaning it actually ends up taking more time a lot of times Uh, especially when you think about a piece like this like here's a here's a miniature you know think about if even if you're airbrushing 10 of these guys the surface this is a pretty small piece relatively uh but it still has a surface area like like triple this thing you know what I mean? So when you're doing a bunch of those, you're going to have to end up cleaning the airbrush, getting it, it clogged, and it, it ends up uh, not being quite as efficient as I had hoped. Are some of the transparent mixed with the other colors? Example, uh, HS, oh, Hellscape, looks like the factory one had a bit of white added to the red slash yellow transparent paint. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, The actually in the original mix um, for the... For the cracks, the transparent um, paint, uh, I added like a stone edge dry brush a little bit, so it made it a little bit more opaque, but uh, it gave the, the lightness and the contrast that I wanted. Um, so if th- they, uh, they definitely did the same thing with that. They just didn't use um, the transparent red and yellow, like just as it is, they made it lighter. Hmm. Aaron, what was one of the first things you did for Wildlands? Um, I think definitely the swamp banks. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, I remember getting those, like, I think the, before, like, Hellscape, they had finished, like, one of the swamp banks, and, I, and I, they were just like, oh, like, you should start sketching, like, different color um, palettes for the the swamp like how can it work with uh dread hollow but also be its own thing uh so i remember like playing around with it then and that was i don't i have no concept of time yeah yeah that's pro- like that was like a t- year and a half ago man yeah a year and a half of the making that was fun when uh, I helped you paint some of the bulk swamps because I never painted any of the Dread Hollow during Caverns. Oh, um, yeah. And so I got to learn some of that because we were matching it. So that was fun. Yeah, that was that was cool. Like, I, that was, like, before it cha- had to change again. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that was, that was awesome. And then, like, we both... Uh, it was cool, like, last minute... Um, going through the Arenthor mountains with you. Like we had a, uh, a, t- a tight deadline and we both like, I remember there were some late nights and we were talking about that one Christmas song about the, sh- with the shoes. Oh my gosh, remember Christmas that? shoes. Oh my yeah. God, Christmas, Christmas shoes. Christmas <laughs> shoes. <laughs> yes. oh, wait, I, yeah. That was, how late was that? I don't know, that was, that was one of the later nights. It was yeah. for one of the first uh, mountains video shoots that they were going to do so they need a, to build a mountain and yeah. they're like we don't have pieces you know to yeah. build it yeah. as a mountain and so we just we just hung out for a marathon <laughs> and we sang christmas songs <laughs> yeah i think yeah i don't know if we sang christmas songs so much but we definitely heavily discussed christmas shoes yeah i had never heard of that before. yeah you never seen the music video for it yeah and i'm all, all right, about that's uh that's my favorite christmas music. song so when i say christmas songs i really just mean that song right <laughs> that's the epitome of christmas to you <laughs> i get that man i'm just i'm just thinking about like the hours that you guys have put in just painting pieces even during this kickstarter and then like how much larger yeah like the factory load's gonna be 
But I never yeah. learn my lesson because I get to the pledge manager. I'm like, I can get so much more unpainted. And then, by the, and then by the time, and then by the time you get your unpainted stuff from one Kickstarter, you're painting everything for the next Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's no time. Hamster, I'll uh, hold you to it this time. When we get the pledge manager message this time around, I'll make sure that you get painted. Nope, I'm still gonna get a. Okay, I've never mind. You that I, uh, <laughs> I tried to help. I know, but I need it. I need the quantity. I wanna, I wanna get good enough at painting that I can, I can help you out in the process somewhat, either by just base painting or holding, hold, your holding, own. holding your brushes. <laughs> holding oh. your brushes. I'll be, I'll yeah, be. I'm like, I'm like a surgeon. I'll, I'm like dry brush. I'll <laughs> be, I'll be your paint caddy. You're I need yeah, 500 brush cc's boy. of You're base brush blue. Boy. Stop. Uh, speaking of Christmas songs, do you know the Canadian classic, The Cat Carol? No. I've never heard of this. No. Let's hear it. Is this like an Australian, like, drop bear thing? Canadian Cat Carol. A Canadian, Canadian? Yeah. Now, now everybody in the office is curious about it. <laughs> everybody in the office being two more people than the ones that are on stream. Three. Still. Three? Three. I'm a person too, you know. I was counting you and Nate. Is Tyler here? Yes. Oh, I thought he was in the other room. He's hardly a person, oh, though. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. So, yeah, two. Correct. Two. Two point five. It's like two, two and a half men. <laughs> oh god <laughs> so to summarize so far base coat shallow water green moss dry brush another lighter dry brush then rocks in a base gray darken slightly mm -hmm. uh, and I know pretty like I'm pretty sure the two um, the moss green and the the mint minty color green are probably going to get combined in the factory version because just to save time. Yeah, most yeah. likely. Uh, so the leaves are separate on the quiltron. Is that just for the prototype, or is that? Uh, yeah, that should just be for the uh, the prototype. Yeah. Yeah, when but they're it, actually. But it makes it a little easier, so. Yeah, when when they're actually casting the the dwarvenite version, it'll all be one cast. Um, but uh, it's not gonna be too bad because you just like won't paint the what's like under the hood, right? Like you won't even need to worry about some of those branch areas. Uh, but since it already arrived unassembled, I just it might be easier to see too. I figured, like you know, that's so fair. That's why it, I like it. it lets you get in closer on the individual pieces. The cat Carol. Oh, we're gonna have to listen to that at some point. Uh, <laughs> Ilian sent it, but like we're you know we're doing the stream. I'm, I am very curious about it though. Everybody has left the chat. Talk about what a bop. Our God is an awesome God is, though. Like, I don't care about any religious when, affiliation. Oh, when the bass drops. Oh, for real. <laughs> There's something really powerful about that song. Please let me know when the singing stops so I can turn my volume back up. <laughs> well, we can't let you know if you have your volume off. Right? Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> that was worth it. Hey everyone, just finished playing and DMing my first true game of D&D. You DM'd on your oh, first game? Oh, it was so much fun. We were playing Storm King's Thunder. I haven't done that one yet. Hopefully in the future, Dwarven Forge will be incorporated into our storytelling. I wonder what, what settings are in Storm King's Thunder. I don't know that one. You're asking the wrong girl. That's fair. Barking up the wrong tree, am I right, hamster? Yeah! <laughs> you know, we, have people, we have more people asking us for, for doing more. <laughs> yeah, some people are being what? real mean. What? We're, I'm, getting, I'm getting really mixed messages. Uh, people are really enjoying it. People telling us to stop. Oh yeah, bring in Duncan to help the with that. That's a good that point. The person that wants more meowing is Casey. So that's Casey. She's... Casey's Twitch name is Pritzy. I've said too much. Oh, well, I was wondering. <laughs> I was wondering why they were a mod. Uh, is that to do it? I don't think they're getting paid for their singing. Hey, yeah, that's why I was brought in. I that's it was actually good. yeah. That's Thank my you. yeah. You guys I'm are the, on key. I'm okay. the office bard. Can we get some bass with that wailing? You are. You've been to karaoke once, my bro. I've been to karaoke several times. You just usually don't remember. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Hamster was the office bard. I've only been to karaoke oh, once. <laughs> every, 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 everybody's trying to force huh? Hamster to be a bard, but he never wants to actually sing. Yeah, because when you become trained at all, you become horribly self-conscious because if it's, if it's bad, 
you know, people be like, wow, he was he he paid for lessons. <laughs> I think you're great. Mm. But I'll stick to throwing being... paint around. Okay. Is but you didn't even take lessons for that. Hamster, are you using red now? I am. I uh, I actually looked at my paint log, which is another tip. Always write stuff down because you'll forget what you did. And I actually, I wrote after a base of deep lava, terracotta plus some red, uh, for the first dry brush. Um, so I'm basically like fudging the effect and just uh, thinning down some of the paint, and washing it in some of the shadow areas, and it does a similar thing. It's not going to look too different because we've got a lot of dry brush layers to go anyway. Um, so this will do for now. Excellent. Uh, Hamster, is there a theme to this tree? Uh, yeah, actually, it's Scarborough Fair by Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> um. The theme for this tree is as, like, bright and magical as I could make it while still mostly appearing like a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a fine line. Yeah, so it's like, because one of the plant, my first version of the shimmer frond looked like a, a Dr. Seuss tree. It was just like a lot of primary colors, and it didn't look quite planty enough. It mm -hmm. was too far from it. But this still has like brown and green in it. We're just going a little bit to a color extreme, so it's right in the ballpark. Um, let's see. When do you think you'll get the new joy joy of painting Dread Hollow up? I'm thinking to just wait so I can use it to paint both Kickstarters to make it easier to paint. Definitely not until after the Kickstarter. Like we, I gotta say, after yeah. we sleep. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is a thing that like the covering the new paint scheme for Dread Hollow is going to be important though, just because it ne yeah it now applies to two Kickstarters, so I'm sure that'll be one of the first things that that'll probably be the next Warp in painting. Yeah. 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 I, uh, yeah. For sure. Um. Hamster, what war game should I learn to use with my Dwarven Forge and D&D &D minis? I think I know what he's going to say. Yeah, which war game should I learn for the Dwarven Forge? Which, which uh, the balanced druid in chat is wondering what war game they should learn to use with their Dwarven Forge and D&D &D minis. And I think I know what you're going to say. With their Dwarven Forge and D&D &D minis. You know what you got to look into is this game I discovered this year called Relic Blade. Yep, is that I what knew your it. guess? Yeah, I knew I'm it. in love with that game. You don't need a lot of models you can have a team of like three guys you can have up to like six or eight or something it's super fast paced so something like the swamp builds is really good for it uh hopping around the lily pads and everything uh very it, it wants you flying all over the board uh and doing a lot of wacky stuff and getting a game over a lunch break and maybe getting a couple Ooh. games in uh it's this the creator uh, did all of the illustrations in the book, designed the rules, and sculpted the miniatures. So it's like he's a one-man machine. Next time named you're Sean in. Sutter. Oh. Um, and uh, yeah, so look at Relic Blade. I'm really liking that game, especially it's an entry-level game. Uh, and it plays on a two-by-two -two board, too. So if you get a bunch of Dwarven Forge, you can fill out like a Warhammer table, which I am also very much looking forward to. But uh, this plays on a smaller space, so you can really pack a lot of punch with a few pieces we actually stole a couple things from relic blade for the uh war game tournament that we did a a almost the whole activation stuff is from there with like the activation dice and everything i was yeah. gonna say next time you're in we should uh do that over lunch absolutely i've uh, over quarantine you know late nights being cooped up i've purchased a lot of relic blade uh in the wee hours of the morning when my mind isn't quite uh, You're the your right sharpest. place. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm going to need to buy more stuff. <laughs> I have a lot of Relic Blade. <laughs> Doesn't it feel like that's going to fix everything, and then once you get it, you're like, all right, on to the next like purchase. Yeah, I bought the yeah. Warhammer Indominus box, and I'm like, this is such a great value. So three in the morning the next day, I was like, I'm buying another box. Uh, <laughs> what could I've heard on? really good things about Indominus, though. Great models, great value. Um, Aaron, so are you using the same dry brush for these stones as you are the, the bank as well, or is that... Oh, yeah. Because there's stone there. So, like, yeah, all the grass and all the stones, they basically, between swamp and forest, they all have the same colors, um, except for the outer edges of the swamp banks. That's where it gets a little bit different. Um, 
but for this step I'm using a combination of Earthstone and School Bus um, and like a I'd say a two to one ratio and I'm just going over um, the dirt uh, trails and patches and all the stone um, and also the sides of the pieces and I'm just doing a dry brush on them and this is this this is the Aaron Thor in like a Scartman paint scheme as well. So that's what helps it all blend together. Yeah. Um, let's see. Method Man says, I don't know if Nate will remember this, but in LA last year we talked about a Dwarven Forge Feywild Circus Ferris wheel. Would love to see that in the Tread Hollow. <laughs> that might be a sign of civilization, unfortunately. I have money on Nate remembering it. He remembers a is, lot of the fan interactions. Is he still I don't know if it got at? made. I think he's still here. He grabbed a claw, so... Oh, yeah, he's going to be here for a while then. Um, if he comes if he comes out, we'll, uh, we'll ask him about it. He also... He was the one that suggested uh, sending minis to you, Method Man. Yeah, he... Uh, he's a big old fan. When we were figuring out who to send stuff to, uh, he made sure you were on the list. Um... Which, he, oh, at, at the risk of uh, talking too much about this, another game you should try <laughs> is uh, <laughs> is Frostgrave. Yes, because, Frostgrave is great, uh, it, especially if you're familiar with D and D, because it's uh, focused on narrative campaigns, um, and the activations are a little similar, and it's made to be used with any miniatures that you want. And it, further, the game Rangers of Shadow Deep is the same author. Slightly different aesthetic, but also using any miniatures, and it's uh, cooperative missions versus like an AI uh, enemy, usually. Sort of those kind of scenarios. So those two games will also be great if you have D a bunch of D&D &D miniatures, a bunch of terrain, and you want to try wargaming. Um, do you think it would be hard to add snow via paint to the dead trees? I figured it would be easiest for pine trees, but wonder if it would be cool in the dead trees. Or should I just wait for a future Kickstarter? Uh, Do you think the sculpts allow for that? Um, you could, but like it's it's hard to like it's hard to compensate for like there being no sculpted detail or texture. I think it would be easier to do on pine or like if you wanted to make a snowy mountain. Uh, but I don't. Yeah, the the dead trees might be a little tough. Um, maybe if you modded and put like like your own like sculpt. Like sculpting snow onto it, that would help. But like, I think just alone, I would just look like it might look a little strange. I'm not sure. Yeah, you might be able to get away with like a light snow, but if you want heavy snow, there's no like mounds. There's no like mounds in the sculpt, like you said. Yeah, it's hard to like fabricate things being there that aren't. <laughs> Could you just make all those leaves look like mistletoes though, and go with like a Christmas shoes theme. <laughs> That's my plan. <laughs> do you know the Canadian cat version of that song? I do. I sang it earlier with you. Oh no, that was uh, that was Cat Carol. Oh, the Canadian cat version of yes, Christmas shoes. Of Christmas shoes. Yeah, the Trans Siberian called... Cat Orchestra. I thought it was called Christmas Boots. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Aaron, so it looks like you're doing highlights to the rocks right now. What uh, what are you using for that? Yeah, this is the final dry brush for the stones, and it's um, it's a mixture of cavern, uh, olive dry brush, and a little bit of black to make it darker. Um, and this is like the same paint scheme for Aaron Thor and the escarpments. Um. I tend to take vacation time when my Dwarven Forge comes in and just dedicate some days to painting. I would have loved to have done that. However, my Hellscape arrived like the day before the Kickstarter started. <laughs> Bad planning. It's yeah, a, sh that, it's a shame that I chose for... for my Hellscape to arrive then, yeah. Yep. For a lot of my uh, armies, I'm purposely designed, like making it a challenge to try to paint it in a weekend because already I've had an army assembled for two years and it hasn't received any paint. So if I just make it like a fun challenge, I will actually have something painted instead of having a bunch of plastic. I feel like the thing about hobbies like this is that like, it is very fun and relaxing to paint, but it also is like, you're not really taking time off. Like I saw a good tweet about it. All, all my proverbs come from tweets now, like screw any text <laughs> from pri prior years, but 
it's like uh, you still have to dedicate time and mental space to it. So it's I feel like I keep procrastinating on like a lot of the minis I have and like things that I could paint because I'm like, oh, but I want to just sleep all the time. I'm I have three corks with the sticky stuff on them to like mount the the minis on, and so what happens is any night where I end up just like watching a stream or something and I don't really have work to do, I just put three minis on there, and I try to just do them all with a similar paint scheme. Nice. And so I I'm trying to do that as a way to just kind of keep it in small batches, and because the the main thing with me in painting is that I literally just started i think i've done less than 10 minis in my life mm. and so a, a lot of it is like that fear of like doing it bad so just not wanting to try it all um I so i just kind of like keep it real small and just tell myself like just use these couple colors and uh try to do it like that the only mini i've ever let people look at or like like actually let's see the light of day is the first mini i did because then i could be like well it's the first one i did so no matter how bad it is is that, is that the raccoon it is yeah it, it, but that turned out awesome though you did this like freehand raccoon face and it looks amazing thanks i the other ones i i'm trying to hone my skills so that i can really wow with the next time i let somebody look upon my work <laughs> but thank you it means a lot to hear that from you have you done a Warhammer Army Box weekend competition? Uh, no, but who's in? Start collecting <laughs> box, pick your faction. Mace, if you want to play war, I told you the next step in wargaming is you have to make your own list, and that's where the real strategy starts coming in. So, okay. uh, yep. we'll start you off with a faction. All right, sounds of, good. Uh, if it means we get to play stuff, I will definitely be in. All right. Yes. I will paint if it means I get to play. I bought these giant battle like six by four battle mats and i need you guys to play with me because they're in my apartment like what is was i thinking no one is in here playing with me i need you guys to play games with me so i can use the stuff oh, i spend money on we just so happen to have a 10 by 4 table at work oh yeah i don't know i, mean, I would i would love to go all the way to your apartment to play. no i'm saying i will but there's bring like this it. there's this thing that's been going on the last couple months <laughs> um, explain no I will bring it to the office, like but six I, months. we yeah. gotta play. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down to clown once everything's, uh, you know, like Kickstarter's over and Mesa's had her yeah. beauty rest. Yeah. <laughs> okay, real quick, I did. The next step is you Aaron was using clowning. school bus earlier. I, I also clowning. used a uh, school bus for the next highlight. Now it's really starting to pop a little bit. Pop, pop. Yeah, it's 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 weird. Like looking at. Like you can still see where the where the lava was, but man, yeah. it, you see so little of the lava at this point now. Yeah, but because it's transparent, it's definitely influencing the school bus on top of it, so that's why it's important. Yeah, it's good. Like it, it is, there's a lot of texture to that. Ooh, Aaron, mm -hmm. would you be interested in doing a stream where you attempt like the fall alternate paint? <laughs> you can say no. That's fine. Oh uh, yeah, like if there's time. Uh, I would totally uh, be all about that. We get so many requests for an autumn paint scheme for Drunk Hollow. Yeah, and I remember yeah, Mace, what... you saying that you really wanted to it's do that. It's all I want. That's it would, like it would look incredible. Like... <laughs> yeah. That's why I plan to do mine. That's going to look awesome. Okay, a little fool yourself, I see. If you also want to be on that stream, Hamster, that's fine. But I uh, have to collect Com the pieces at the end to do a nice... Uh... We got we to gotta take them home so we can make yeah, sure that we quality. evaluate them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sure, might, sure, sure. Might take a while to... Uh, <laughs> might, might take a while to, like, make our, our ruling. you got to, like, really inspect every yeah. square inch of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you might want to do doubles or triples of the pieces, too. I do have I do have two unpainted dread hollow forests. This is what I do to oh my. myself. <laughs> Crate is saying that he'll join you in a competition. He just bought a box of Thousand Suns. Yes, I've been seeing a lot of his chaos in the Discord. Yeah, Crate posts a lot of Crate and Rabbit Burner both post a lot of Warhammer stuff in there. Love uh, it. Actually, I, I'm recognizing a fair amount of the names in here from the Discord. Uh, my warband is 100% Splintered Fang. Ooh. Just to see the number. Boom. All right. Uh, 
There's a book by a guy named Pat Smith. He's a war gamer. His example is the Ardennes. He even talks about temporary winterization of terrain. I think would be applicable Ooh. here. Huh. Temporary? Like there's some sort of like webbing thing or something you just place on top of it. Kind of like our moss sort of attachments. Maybe it's something like that. That sounds cool. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, man, so many people here have armies. I don't know if I could ever get to that size. I started making a, a gnome army. That's just I have six like <laughs> gnome six gnome like fighter minis from from reaper and i just decided i was going to do them all in the same paint scheme so that we can say that there's some kind of like war band or something but that's why it's cool that like so many war games exist now like it used to just be these giant army skill games but now there's a lot of smaller systems that like you can just paint a handful of models and jump in <laughs> yeah i can't wait for my battletech stuff man yeah i want to cool. i want to play battletech so bad I have like five going at once. I get kind of drained on just one mini at a time. Interesting. So, so you feel like you like lose energy if you're focusing on one thing for too long, and you gotta like keep swapping. Yeah, uh, I sometimes just have like uh, different projects. I normally have a couple things going at once. So if I'm losing steam, I switch over, and I'm usually a little invigorated, go an extra hour or something. Uh, Alien Blaze wants to know if you've heard of this game called Fight Hammer or Battle Saw or something like that. He says it. He, he says it uses a lot of minis. Fight Hammer. Fight Hammer, Battle Saw. <laughs> uh, I mean, by, get... by, is, it, is it by uh, Fun Activity Factory? It's by, it's, by, it's by, yeah, it's by Leisure Studio, I think. Oh. <laughs> uh, Leisure Studio. <laughs> Leisure Studio. Leisure Studio actually sounds like a thing. It does. A... For a second, I was like, wait, is this a real thing? Yes, Battletech. Uh... Oh. I'm just I'm just seeing, like, all this Party stuff. Party foul. Oh, what are you... Are you putting some reds in there? Uh, Aaron? Oh, no. Um, I don't know what it looks like on camera, but it's just base wood is the, the base dry brush okay, for so the just, wood pieces. It's just brown. I'm just... Not the smartest. I didn't even notice. Yeah, well, you did. You did a, a red brown. You did. You did all the yeah. woods. I didn't even notice. Yeah, on the on a swamp bank. Is there a mini painter online that you guys follow that you're like, dang, that person's like the epitome? Hamster has talked about so many. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Like my Mojo Hamster Instagram, it has just turned into only miniature accounts that I follow. Uh, Sergio Calvo, a lot of. Sp people in spain do these insane miniatures but he's one of my favorites and i've watched some videos on him talking about miniature painting and uh i just he his process is really cool of just like don't like do the work till you have to just block in these colors and then we start doing fun detailing stuff and smooth it out and it just looks amazing and it makes it look easy so he's probably one of my favorites i just lose interest because nothing starts looking good until you get to the wash the wash does a lot of lifting like uh, that's that's I always feel bad about like the stuff that I'm painting until I put the wash on and then it it then it looks like I did work. I'm a I'm a little too precious with the stuff I do when I'm painting. Like it takes me a very long time to finish a mini because I am very like I where I put the brush it feels like it has to be final. Like I won't let any mistakes happen. So the wash does yeah. help a lot, but I, I uh, it takes yeah, me a lot. I have to make a deliberate conscious like i have to tell myself look stop being fiddly move on because you're painting over this paint you know block it in yeah I've, i have to tell myself that all the time i've learned to relax on it but like the first like two or three minis i painted it did take well over two hours which i don't i don't even know if that's normal or not but it just felt like i was being kind of nitpicky well, let me tell you this. A, a job like the Archon, yeah, uh, doing something for me, uh, you know, obviously everyone's going to be different, but that was probably a three or four hour job on okay. the one miniature. So. It helps that it was also Joe, you know, it, it's his character. Oh. So now I'm doing lava yellow highlights. We're just I'm doing just a smaller and smaller area, and again some are more transparent than others. Like we're saying that Aaron taught me of just uh, 
doing little spots a little heavier, some a little lighter, and just uh, doing a gradual shift to brighter dry brushing. Aaron's secret pain painting mastery lies in the pinky placement. <laughs> I didn't notice. I, I, I've, I'm learning so many new things. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you're under scrutiny the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> you think you know yourself until people watch you. <laughs> oh, that's the thing. Yeah, when you start doing stuff on camera, you start noticing all of... Man, there's so many habits in my speech that annoy the hell out of me now that I, like, have had to listen and look at myself talk. Like you're swearing? <laughs> I've never sworn in my life. You just swore. That's not a swear. That's said, a place. You said... Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that's good for... The yeah, I can't do it without <laughs> the pinky. <laughs> <laughs> the pinky is all the power. If I get into a pinky accident, and it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who has like the world's strongest pinky. I've heard that. Besides Aaron. Right. Besides, besides Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> I've heard that, and I I think this is totally a myth, like a urban legend. But I've heard that if you're not thinking, like you could bite your pinky off like a carrot. I've heard that too. But I don't think that's me. real. Oh God. That, 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 that it's, it's just it's <laughs> just your it's just your brain knowing that like what's going to happen. Your it's, Achilles. It's your brain and your nerves that stop you from doing it. Well, it's also, like, what are you doing? I don't think you can bite off your friend's pinky like a carrot. Like, I think that there's a lot Maybe? more tendons, muscles, and bone. Like, no, I think you can. I don't yeah. think you can. I, I think, feel like you can. I think our teeth it. can rip through you, flesh yeah, if you, we wanted Really? Yeah. yeah, you can absolutely bite off your friend's. Here, give me your hand. Especially yeah, if you only have, like, one a, way to find we're out. not friends. It doesn't <laughs> count. No, that's, that's, if you have, like, a lot of adrenaline, like, yeah. Yeah, you're but that's if you're, like, you're still, like, if you're on PCP, sure, you can bite through a pink. You just gotta go, <laughs> you just, look, you just gotta go ham planet. You can absolutely bite through it. You just, it's, because even the idea. I think it's as easy as eating a carrot. Well, no, because a carrot's not gonna, like, cause severe pain to somebody, except no, for the carrot, I but nobody think, cares about the carrot's I feelings. I think that if I, you are not thinking about somebody else's emotions, like, if you're purely doing it out of, like, like you just want to bite through a pinky and you're happy with the result. I still don't think it's going to be that easy. I think that muscles are a lot stronger than people are giving them credit for in a pinky. Tendons sound chewy. Like, have you ever eaten like meat that still has the tendons in it? That part is hard to get through. And I also know that I'm right and you're wrong. So that's the third part of that <laughs> argument. <laughs> well, so Aaron. now we'll start taking callers on, do you think you could bite through a pin? <laughs> <laughs> um, we got a couple questions. Uh, Toby in HR, which I hope is an office reference, uh, says, it keeps not, let me actually see it. Looking to improve the quality of my craft smart paint so I don't ruin my pieces with a crappy paint job. Anything I should mix with them to ensure decent quality? Craft paints? Yes. Craft smart paints. Sounds like a brand. It does. Oh. It was also capitalized, so I think it's a brand. It's probably just like the... Uh, sort of like an art store, like the store brand. Oh. Let me look it up. Craft Smart. Are there like Lunchables for like hobby kits? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like the apple barrel level sort of. Oh, um, I know what you're talking about. I have no idea. It's an acrylic. It's, they have like a green label. I would say for those, you know, a lot of times when you're looking at miniature painting, hobby painting stuff, they're asking you to thin your paints and stuff a lot, which will help you. But for those, I would I would say be careful with thinning them because uh, they're a little bit cheaper, which is great, but it's because there's not as much pigment in it and it's a little chunkier pigment so it's going to start breaking apart on you quicker if you try to thin it a lot so i would say just use it more often out of the <gasps> right out of the bottle and avoid uh thinning it too much okay uh eddie hall has the world's strongest pinky other than aaron i think my vote would be for getty lee honestly <laughs> Oh, thanks, Chris. Votes on Aaron. <laughs> I'm sorry. Have you, do you? Can you play the bass with one hand? Okay, wait, hold on. Yeah. Now people. You don't know if to... she can't. 
Yeah, you don't know. Wait, okay, but like the base is predominantly these fingers. And if they're really good at it, it's these fingers. And if they're master, these fingers. But okay, then also but have, you, but have you watched Geddy Lee play? No. He plays the bass with one hand because his other hand is playing the keyboard and he's singing. Oh, nice. And so he'll be he'll he'll be he'll be holding the notes and stuff with his hands up here and he'll be strumming with his pinky. But has he painted minis like Aaron has? Probably. He's a huge nerd. Have you heard Rush's music? He's probably got, like, scores of armies. Yeah, but Aaron works scores with Scores of armies. I, I like that. I guarantee. <laughs> I guarantee the guys from Rush, like, played I Warhammer know, together on, on tour. Aaron. Mm, okay. Thanks for your confidence. All right. Yeah, you're I welcome. Appreciate. I don't know why this boob over here isn't more confident, but... Look. He's clearly not competent either, so... All right. Um, okay, okay, here's what I was going to say. People are arguing that the jaw is incredibly strong. Yes, that's true. I'm not saying you couldn't bite through a pinky. I'm saying it's not as easy as biting through a carrot. That's it. Okay. Because you don't have to think about the feelings of a carrot. The average person, oh, the no. average person no. cannot <laughs> harm somebody in that way. The average person is not capable of biting through somebody's finger because we have a conscience. My pinkies are, like, shaking. They're afraid. <laughs> <laughs> you know how things so go. Strange. You know how things go in this office, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, that's not what I'm saying. Especially at this hour, we start getting into wacky hour about this time. Yeah, uh, let's go, baby. Always wacky <laughs> hour. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think it's the same. I will do my own tests guys, on this, and I'll let you know. But you guys are all gonna not agree with me still. That's fine, cause you're wrong. We are an hour away from the 48 hour mark before all that, before that notification goes out to everybody. Oh, great. Oh man. And then we, and then we really hit the, man, we're gonna get so wacky. <sighs> we're gonna do, we're gonna get so wacky. We're gonna get so wacky. We were really wacky today. Like I remember, what, what were we talking about? I what remember we it was just about? very weird. We, we, we were laughing about Toby a lot of a stuff. Baby cam? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I think, I think the, I think the most out of it I got was when Tyler and I just like started like it was in the morning even but I just had slept so little at night that like, you were there Mace and oh you were my upset. gosh I was not upset but I did not understand so we were we we made the Pagliacci joke and then I I tried doing an Italian accent but it came out Russian and so then I said I am Pagliacev famous Russian clown and we just started going off of that and yeah like now that I say it that's really stupid that's not funny at it's all fine. we thought it was hilarious at the yeah time. you guys are tired I was we trying to get an update done that's, that's all my that bad and Pagliacci they're having a good time that's <laughs> yep all that matters realism takes all the fun out of things yeah uh, hey Nate I found this bag of fingers over here near the paint <laughs> <laughs> is right now actually a, uh, a, a finger on my desk. Yeah, there's a few. Oh, yeah, the bloody fingers. Some people from, from some, the Halloween event. That's fair. Some people are saying uh, Aaron's hands are suspiciously clean. I think it helps that you're painting terrain instead of a mini. I think with a mini, especially because hamster is like just Ew, straight up holding the tree. Get that out of there. Oh, yeah, when you're base coating <laughs> a lot, like when I, I base coated beforehand because, yeah, that's the most messy part. Like, if I'm just doing dry brushes or, like, washes, like, I'm usually pretty clean. But, like, power base coating, like, a lot of pieces, like, you, you just, your hand just becomes super messy. Power base coating is a great term. <laughs> <laughs> what paint brands are you using? You're mostly using Bacorni, but is there other stuff mixed in there? Um, sometimes if we run out of Bacorni, we'll use um, Golden brand, which is, like, it's high flow acrylic. It's like we'll just find a similar color to the Bacorni yeah. ones. Um, for instance, like we we don't have any more black in office, so I'm just using the golden uh, carbon black for the black color. And that's usually it. Just either a golden or um, Bacorni. Yeah, when I first started, uh, we had some Reaper, we had a Reaper paint set, I had like an army painter set, and I was just used to, as a hobbyist, like having a bunch of different colors. And so I did use some of those, but uh, as I learned like kind of what's best for what we do in the process, I've uh, finally graduated to pretty much exclusively using Picornis just so that it's easier to replicate uh, in the office. And it's fun because you end up, you know, learning how to mix you know how the colors like to mix and how they behave so it's a cool experimentation process 
There's a big debate. I think it's over like realism and like war game rules, saying that authenticity is better than realism. Realism gets complicated and takes a lot of fun out of games. So for the whole thing, I, I think that's a, a, realism is harder to do. I think compared to like authenticity in most elements of things, like authenticity is like basically you're talking about in in in, in fiction at least you're you're talking about staying consistent throughout the whole piece of fiction like staying true to the rules that you establish so like it may not be how it works in real life but as long as the logic that you set up in the world or in the rule set or in uh the story whatever you're doing as long as that stays consistent then it's authentic and it feels is that verisimilitude is that what that word is for i haven't used that word since high school um it's a thing that you, it's a thing that you hear about a lot in game design like game design logic isn't the same as like real world logic like when you're talking about like stats and everything like the idea of what would actually like, like a better balanced game that feels more authentic is going to be something that doesn't work the exact same way as real life uh it's just i don't know it's a, it's a it's a very complicated and then it gets into subjective stuff about like what it is that you value in a in in a, in a rule set what you're looking for in a story all that stuff yeah i feel like when it, it's you're making something to be experienced as a game you have to like hit that thing of like are are the elements that add to realism adding to like the gameplay experience and like sometimes you got to tweak the balance one way or the other yeah let's see as far as the corny paints why don't you guys raise the price if you're losing money selling it it's great paint i think people would pay a couple dollars more especially comparing it to tiny paint pots it would still be a good deal i don't know if it's the i don't know if it's the 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 price being too low i think it's just not selling much of them in general. It I might think. just be having the inventory, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, got some Picorni paints. People are really liking Picorni. Everything I've heard from everybody that's used Picorni is that it's very, very good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like with anything else. You just have to try it out and experiment with it, and you learn how it behaves and, and for what uses you like it best for, and then all of a sudden it's in your repertoire, and you know, it's just, you just have to give it a shot and, and, you know, that's what I did. Sometimes I'd struggle with Picorni colors and I'm like, I'll I'm grumbling like this Whoa, Picorni paint. Oh, language. Now, I, I just grumbled. There's kids here. There's, I, I highly there's doubt no there are words. kids watching this you painting said stream. Gall. All right. Oh, gall. <laughs> but yeah, you learn its properties and now, uh, you know, now, now I, I like almost, you know, every color I, I, uh, kind of am familiar with like what to use which colors for what purposes and all that uh d voils is asking the real questions uh how many times do you think you can get hit by a sword and survive <laughs> i think it depends i think it depends where um i'd say hit by a sword or stabbed is different hit by a sword um uh, 10 i'm assuming they're talking about it like cleaving through you well like cleaving but then it depends it depends it depends where you get hit and how you get hit. if it's like a slash though i think 10 because modern medicine baby hey just slap a band just slap a flintstones band-aid on it <laughs> keep going call it good yeah it's a flesh wound uh actually i had a protein shake this morning so you might have to hit me like three more times yeah, you're probably gonna have Ooh, to yeah he's small <laughs> yeah, he's he's got more hearts replenished now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got re I've got regen on. It bl oh, okay. So spells that help that make you regenerate health, regeneration spells mm -hmm. that are shortened to R E G E N. Mm -hmm. How do you pronounce that? Regen. Okay. Oh, but you're saying regen. Okay, the full word has a different inflection than some say the. No, I have a lot of friends who who call it Reagan. What? What? I hate it. Are you it. serious? I hate Ooh. it. I'm what? like, it's not called regeneration. They're psychos. <laughs> it's Reagan. I have ignites. never heard that in my life. Yes, yeah, so, like that just does, makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> Could you stop a sword with your teeth like a bullet? Uh, yeah. I mean, swords actually aren't any harder than a healthy carrot. Um, <laughs> or a pinky. <laughs> Cthonian Sons kids were watching earlier. That's right. We do try to stay. We do try to stay kid friendly. Mace, possible. I said gall darn it. I know. I know. I'm just giving You're you. You're on thin ice, hamster. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> Those people aren't. There's friends. ice. Oh. At least nobody in chat seems to be defending Reagan. So there we go. Yeah. All right. 
I, it, oh, it, Don't it's, make it, no, let's not go political. That's not, <laughs> oof, all right. Isn't it? You know what? I saw the trailer for the new Call of Duty game, and they, like, recreated Reagan <laughs> in it, and it's hilarious. They, do you just mean they put Reagan yeah, in the game? Yeah, they put Reagan in it and animated it. <laughs> Here's what, it's, it's called, it's Cold War Call of Duty, so you basically don't do any fighting. That just, I mean, that makes, that makes sense. It's just. I'd like to see him as the final, like, It's not, it's not like a, it's not, it's not like a. I would too. <laughs> it's not like a, which Reagan. president do you think would win a fight though? It's like, not it's not like which, a Tupac who's situation. The toughest like president? Oh, Taft. Who's the toughest president? Oh yeah, Taft. Taft, Taft, Taft. Taft yeah. just has the highest constitution. I mean, I think Taft is a different He's kind of president. He's better than anything. <laughs> yeah, does the, he's got more stamina. Does yeah, the yeah. does the bath yeah, yeah, yeah. does the bath does the bathtub count towards his AC? Oh yeah. Yep. That's his armor. <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt, there's a there's a very strong argument to be made for Yo, Teddy Roosevelt, actually. Yes, I agree with yeah. that. But if you can jump in a bathtub for, like, a nuclear bomb, <laughs> you can survive pretty much anything. Like, Grant, Grant had the Constitution. That's also a very good argument. Teddy Roosevelt, Grant. Teddy Roosevelt, isn't he, like, he got shot and kept speaking, right? That was Teddy Roosevelt, not, not, not FDR, right? <laughs> I both both Roosevelt's were like hardy dudes. Yeah, but Teddy was uh, Teddy was better. I, th I think Teddy was the one that got shot and then like finished his yeah, speech and then moves. went to the hospital. He's like, he's yeah. hardcore. Yeah. Hey, final forty-eight. Wait, oh, no, not not for forty-five minutes. Not for forty-five minutes. <laughs> I think it's not. Like it's that it's, it's, it's nine. It's, it's at nine o'clock sharp, nine. right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I almost like freaked out. I was like, oh, because like when the final forty-eight hits, I feel like there's gonna be like probably. There's probably gonna be a wave of a lot of people in the last two days probably going to the Discord and showing up in comments and everything that are new to... Because what we found out was... What did we find? We found out that there's a lot more people who are following the Kickstarter and like watching it than we've had in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering if that was because of a lot of the outreach that we did and if that's the case, there's gonna be a lot of new people that we I'm need to try and help I'm excited and through. terrified. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot. Yeah, um, next two days are gonna be a lot, but they're gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, according yeah. to Kickstarter, must be forty-eight in minutes. Yeah, Kickstarter. Uh, Kickstarter rounds down. Yeah. Yeah. This painting's making me want to buy more and start painting it. Yeah. Painting is painting is a lot of fun as I've been getting into it. So how did you finish? So did you just use colors that you had already used on the on the floor to do the bank? Yeah. So. Um, Looks like you did like a black and then you did school bus or? Yeah, after I did the highlight on the wood, which is a combination of base wood and um, stucco, I, this is the only difference between the forest and the swamp, is along the bank edge, um, I, I just kind of put black around the outer edge and then I just like blended it up. Um, and then after that I did the brown mix I did which was earthstone and school boss um, and I I kind of did a uniform dry brush over that and then I took a smaller brush and kind of concentrated it on the, sh the shrubs um, that are along the line and, and, and any of the plants to make them look more dead and then right now I'm going in with the moss green Same, to fill in the that. green sludge um, and I'm centralizing the dry brush on the green sludge but then I'm also like carrying it through the edges just to make it a little bit more mucky. And that's what makes it a swamp bank as opposed to a forest bank. Yeah, uh, the the final step with that actually is just to take a little bit of the wood dry brush um, and to go over as a highlight, go over the shrubs just to make them pop. All the shrubs are, and, and also all the plants, just to make them look like dead along the shoreline kind of thing. Yeah. You know, sludge was an odd color because I was just saying, like, you know, after Hellscape, I was starting to get really familiar with the Picorni colors. But when I was looking for a spare paint, I was looking in, like, our extra stash of paint in the closet. <laughs> and there was dozens of this color sludge. And I'm like, what is this paint? I've never seen this before in my life. And we had it by the gallon. We were hiding it from you. <laughs> yeah. And then I used to have a swamp boat. I was like, this is perfect. <laughs> uh, which president had the strongest teeth? I mean, was it George Washington that had no, the wooden no, teeth? No, 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 no. Definitely. I mean, he. It, that is also. That's, how that's the story not goes. true. He actually had horse teeth. I feel like what? it's even better. 
Oh, well, then yeah. that answers the next one. Which president like carrots? It'd, it'd be the guy with horse teeth. Yeah, it would. It's perfectly well, made for cutting through carrots. That's how he made the entire. That's thing. actually why he did it. He got he he knocked his teeth out so he could put horse teeth in so he could eat carrots more efficiently. Yeah. 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 Say. Yeah. Jimmy Carter, peanut farmer extraordinaire. What makes you decide when to use actual black and not mix your own? <laughs> what is weaker than carrot? I bet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wh- Correct. Well, yeah. How do you, how do you decide when to do? Uh, use real black and when to mix something for black. I usually usually uh, I'll either go sepia dark umber with a little bit of black or I'll just go straight black. Um, straight straight black is one of those things where yeah it could look more realistic if I added some brown to it but some of the steps have to be one color like they all can't be mixes because then it would be over complicated for people who want to paint it by themselves um but yeah it definitely will give it a, a more like realistic tone if you were to mix in like a sepia or a dark umber um with a little bit of black or with a blue to create a black um hmm. but just for simplicity's purposes i just go in with the black because that's just one of the ones that i can like simply be like okay this one's just one paint it's not a mix <laughs> <laughs> Like one yeah, of that's a good ones. point. Like, you can decide for yourself, look, if you want to go the simple, fast route, just throw on black, you're not going to notice a huge difference, it's going to be great. But, if you do want to add a little bit of interest, if you throw in a few drops of color, it is going to have, you know, look a little more interesting than this straight black. So you can decide for yourself as you're painting, like, which route you want to go. Yeah. And, and like, I guess... I guess if it was just more on its own a black, like if you're painting a mini and it had like black fabric, then I'd say like mix your own. But if you're, like if it's in this case with the swamp bank, it's underneath layers of dry brush. Um, So it doesn't make as much of a difference. Definitely. Um, Yeah. Yeah, you're like painting a whole set. It's a lot of pieces that are going together, built out. Yeah, you want to keep it as simple as possible like there's a, yep. enough mixing with um with our schemes with all this the stuff i've painted sorry in advance uh, <laughs> a lot a lot of my trees the lot when we did the black rod stream it was like uh, i was like oh no i've mixed everything oh god <laughs> how difficult is painting these to make them look beautiful would you recommend not attempting if you've never taken art classes trying to figure out if painted or unpainted makes more sense if you're interested in painting, I think give it a shot because uh, we we really try to make the execution of the paint schemes like pretty simple. Like we're saying, uh, a balance of paint mixes and pre-mixed, and it's a lot of dry brushing, a lot of like pretty low precision techniques. Uh, so if you're interested in trying it, I would say go for unpainted. But what were you gonna say, Aaron? Yeah, I was going to, I, like, I totally agree. Um, I think, like, if you were to be interested in developing your own paint scheme, maybe that's a little ambitious um, yeah. without knowing, like, color theory and stuff like that. Um, but, like, definitely going off of the paint schemes or, like, if you wanted to make some changes or, like, make accents di- um, different, um, like, yeah, go for it, like Hamster said. Um, how many steps were in the Dread Hollow factory paint process for like a normal forest tile? What was the question? How many steps were in the Dread Hollow factory paint process for a normal forest tile? Um, I think they're talking about the original scheme. Yeah, uh, it's very difficult for me to remember. I think it was closer to... I want to say nine. Yeah, that's the number I remember too. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we kind of got it down. Actually, I have some pieces of the new, like, simplified Dread Hollow scheme, and I just kind of wanted to, like, show everyone um, that, like, going forward, like, it's backwards compatible, but it's also now it's a lot um, more, like, simple and streamlined, so it's easier for you to paint your own and like it, it's going to be easier for the factory to like make things more consistent because there's a lot of variation on the last batch um so it's just like it, it going forward kind of thing like this is the new um slide it this way a little oh bit. sorry no it's okay this is one of the new ones and you can see the greens match each other the rocks match each other with the forest and the bank 
Um, and then I have another one here. So it's a lot of like minimal, um, minimal like accent colors and not a lot of variation within the greens, but it, it, it definitely gives you a good base, like if you wanted to add accents of your own. Um, but yeah, that this is what it looks like uh, going forward with the new um, Dread Hollow repaints. Excellent. Yeah. Um. Yes, yeah, so that, that's that's the that, that's the main thing for uh, the uh, older brother. Older brother games is the guy who asked about the whether you should get painted or not. That's the main thing is with these pieces in particular, like we will have painting guides uh, and and ways to help you with painting, and we also have a lot of people on the Discord and in the Switch chat and such that. Um, that uh, that do a lot of painting and are uh, and are down for trading tips and helping you show people uh, all that jazz. Is older brother code for big brother? <laughs> like, are we being surveilled right now? <laughs> we literally are streaming for an audience at the moment. Like, we are broadcasting ourselves. <laughs> I mean, I'm not people saying they're in the us. wrong, but I'm like, is that the government right there? <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure the government is, like, nervous about their first paint job. <laughs> um, so I will say I will say about Painted, uh, keep in mind, too, that, like, when we're designing this stuff, like, we are considering the fact that we sell an unpainted product. Like, the sculpts have to have, the texture needs to have be considered, like, to be painted over. The schemes need to be efficient and, uh, you know, doable. Uh, you know, so, like... If you've painted miniatures before and you're intimidated by like painting a lot of terrain, I wouldn't let that get in your way. Because uh, if you're familiar with painting stuff at all, you're you're going to be fine. And you have a lot of pieces to paint, so you're going to get better at it. Like you're going to learn the scheme, you paint a couple pieces, and uh, you, before you know it, you're going to be able to just cruise. Yeah. yeah. That's the advantage of doing uh, like a bunch of floor pieces is it's doing the same thing over and over again for, for yeah. doing like a set of floor pieces. Yeah, and if you make a mistake, like you could literally just wipe it off if you catch it quick enough with a paper towel or even with your hands, like I do that all the time. Yeah. Or cover it up with a ba mix in your own base coat. Um, and let me tell you this, if you make a mistake, when you build it out, you are you could leave it and you will not notice. Yeah. <laughs> like, when you build so many pieces together, like, sometimes I, I, I get frustrated, I'm like, this doesn't look how I want it, I walk away and I come back, I don't even remember, I can't even find what I was worried about. <laughs> like... I think the number one thing I've actually learned from these streams, from, like, not only the painters, but the sculptors, and then also from, like, Nate doing the foam things, is that taking a step away or like putting the piece down and calling it like done even when you're not ready to is so much more important than like feeling like you've finished it because sometimes it's like you're just going to keep nitpicking and like trying to get it perfect but art's never really done like it's the quote like art's never done it's just like abandoned you know yeah 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 the the roughest part about like finishing a project like this is always towards the end like when we're batch painting it's like oh this is great like like getting all like it's a lot of work but it's towards the end when you have to make the final decisions and like button up the paint masters that's always the hardest part because it's like making it's finalizing the decisions that you can't change it's for right? everything yeah yeah that's intimidating my yeah my friend satchel had a friend who uh always told him finished is better than perfect mm. and uh basically that you're never gonna make it exactly how like everything you think it could be in your mind so you at a certain point you just have to like let it go you have to realize like when you're just kind of kicking yourself um yeah and i think you can see things for what they really are with time like previous sets like i remember having some space away from them but then seeing them on at gen con on the table i was like wow i really never appreciated like how good everything looks like the sculpting and everything like it's hard when you're in it to appreciate like everything about it absolutely i feel like also after pencils down and hearing the feedback that's when you like because i feel like initially you're like wow that's amazing and then after it you kind of like 
get your like second vamp of like holy crap this is amazing like i i yeah. forgot how great this is because yeah, yeah. of how like um just used to it i became uh, there's some people wondering if there's a lot of difference between painting resin versus dwarvenite, and what material you would like painting on besides dwarvenite. Mm, I resin is easier to paint on because the detail is more crisp and sharp, and like uh, dwarvenite is a little bit softer and duller in detail. Um, but I don't think there's that much of a difference. And mostly I'm speaking about like dry brushing. That's where you see the main difference with. Um, both take paint that pretty much the same. Um, it's just the dry brushing. I can definitely feel the difference because the texture is a little bit different. Yeah, Dwarvenite loses some of those details. Yeah. Yeah, and that's for, that's for durability. Uh, so it definitely is a boon in some ways, but like you're gonna have to get used to dry brushing and it'll, it'll take a few pieces, but uh, you'll definitely notice that difference, yeah. You going in with purple? Uh, yeah, I'm mixing a little bit of a purple. It's gonna end up pretty pastel. Um, it might be a little too bright. I'm trying to get it a little closer to how I have it. So it went, it's not gonna be quite as bright, but it's gonna be kind of like how this ends up with uh, a lot of stone edge in the mix where it's like bright but not technicolor bright it's sort of pastel that's how it'll end up on the, the cones too speaking of purple that's like the main difference between uh the forest and the swamp paint schemes is a uh, forest has red accents and the swamp has purple mm. and you can see like the little like berries in the center of uh, the plants and everything on the swamp bank in the front, it's little these little like lavender kind of touches, whereas it looks like red berries and the like on the forest piece. Yeah, the, like with simplifying the paint scheme for Dread Hollow, um, we found that we could only do one accent color, and I just didn't want to do the same red throughout swamp. So purple seemed to uh, go like pretty well with um the swamp paint scheme with the green the like slime sludgy greens so that's it, it would be it would have been nice to be able to like paint the frog a special color and paint the skull like bring out all the details but unfortunately like this is already pretty complicated like if you compare this to like a um a dungeon which is it like it's it's only three steps it's an accent color, um, dry brush, and then actually two more steps if you count the pillars. It's much simpler. Like this, you have to avoid things and it's much bigger pieces. So it's like, yeah, it would be nice to like fill in all these beautiful details, but um, we have to keep it simple because like we're mass producing them. Like we can't fill in all the little details. So yeah, that was the, the just filling in some of the accents and like flowers and stuff with the different colors. Yeah, if we if we ask them to take the time to do every little detail, the way that uh, the way that you guys like to do it on every piece, it would take us way longer to uh, to fulfill all of it. Or it would cost a fortune. And it would, oh, it would and it, yeah, and it, and it would cost That's, a lot more. Yeah. yeah. Or the end product would get like very um there'd be a lot of variance and it would get very messy because they're trying to like do it in a certain amount of time and they're very like yes we'll do that but then they go through the line and it's like it's not as precise as like yeah we'd like it to be uh here's a spicy one you get them free for life what is your dream paintbrushes to always use <laughs> i really liked that uh saber one that you hamster were showing me like i think it's called the saber oh or yeah, like the katana the, uh, or something the katana <laughs> the, well, it's that some brush, kind of blade no that brush is not a brush the knife it was like a rubber tip it is a rubber tip for doing things that are freehand and doing things like eyes where it's not made to cover a large area 
so it doesn't hold any moisture because there's no bristles. It's meant to be very accurate yeah. and uh, fine-tipped, so you're drawing, like literally drawing or writing a freehand design or doing yeah, eye that. pupils and stuff like that. It's a really cool thing. Uh, I, I think it's a really neat idea. Uh, it reminds me of on the Sorrow Nest, all the yellow dots that are in there. I actually use the end of a pencil mm. to do a similar thing to like just kind of hit the spots accurately. And there's not a lot of paint on it. It's not holding a brush full of paint, but uh, it's accurate. But Hamster, is that the one that we got from... I remember Nate brought us back from one of the conventions. Yeah, yes. that was that. Do you Gears. Oh, what's the name of the company? Games and Gears. Yeah, I love those brushes. I Yeah, like... and, and they come in that cool leather pouch and stuff. And the design yeah. of them is cool because it's almost like a pen cap where, like, those brushes, you, you, you pull them out. Like, the you pull it out of the brush handle, basically, and flip it over and insert it so that the brush tip is exposed. And then you, you pull it off and reverse it to go inside the paint handle to protect it. So it's like a travel set. Yeah, and they're really sturdy. Like, they're, like it's like a metal it's like made out of metal the brush handles yeah yeah like and they yeah. put a little hole in it to make sure that like moisture doesn't sit in there like they thought of everything on that yeah and so that what what is it called and it's by games and gears games and gears that was a cool brush i also of course i'm sure the katana if you've looked at uh miniature painting brushes the uh Series 7, Windsor Newton is a classic natural hair brush. That's one of my favorites for miniature painting. The thing about the natural hair is, like, uh, I'll almost always use a synthetic, like the golden Taclon brushes for base coating and stuff, but if you want a fine line, nothing has a laser-sharp point like the natural hair for the little details and highlights on miniatures, like the 28 millimeter classic size. So I, I like these. I have something I've been wondering for a long time, actually, Hamster. Like, how do you keep your brushes in such pristine condition? Like, I will wash them out. I won't even rub them against the bottom of the cup or anything, and I'll let them dry sideways. And yet, none of them keep their point like your brushes do. And is it like the magic of spit? Like, what do you do? I do have a bad habit of sometimes putting the brush in my mouth. Uh... <laughs> well, he, he, here's the secret is they don't. I just buy so many of them that I throw them away as soon as they're bad. Oh, <laughs> but, so he's but, good at covering it up. Oh. Because yeah, I never... These ones, these ones are cheap. I literally find, like, the cheapest packs of the the synthetic ones. So I, I buy, like, eight packs. So I just, like, throw them out immediately. Especially the dry brushes will last for a while. But uh, ones with a point, like... So sometimes these ones they won't even last me a whole miniature before the tip starts curling that's just the nature of like the synthetic hair you could try hard as you might they they're not going to last very long but that's why you use them for certain steps that like base coating and you got to be do the stabby stab into the crevices and that kind of mm -hmm. thing i'll use them for that and most of our stuff honestly because you have to keep things pretty low precision to be manufactured so you shouldn't be like well you have to use a fine brush and get this edge exact like that's not going to work so most of the dorm forge stuff i actually get by with the the bulk cheap synthetics we're playing musical chairs sorry i was listening <laughs> so we weren't making any music because everybody complained last time yeah <laughs> meowsical chairs meowsical chairs by cats <laughs> uh so, older brother games. If you're looking for, uh, if you want to get, if you're going on painted to get more than one terrain type, would you guys say that the easiest one to get, uh, the, the easiest one, if you're if you're getting used to painting, mm -hmm. would the easiest terrain to pick up on painted be Aranthor? Yeah, Aranthor or Dungeon. Yeah, I'd say Aranthor or Dungeon, and then Cavern is like a close second because Cavern gets a little wonky because it's not really like a lot of. Uh, flat surfaces, it's cur uh, curved a lot of the time, and um, but with Aranthor, like the escarpments, a lot of flat edges, so it's really easy to dry brush. Um, and then same with the dungeons, like it's basically completely flat, so it makes it much like it's good for beginners. 
And, and good for practicing dry brushing. Yeah. So for this Kickstarter, probably get Mountains Unpainted, if you had to pick one. Yeah. All yeah. That, yeah, that's the simplest. We actually did the painting for that last. That was the last biome that we painted, and I'm glad that was the last one because it was a nice thing to just finish on rather than be stressed like about getting everything done in time for filming. Now, how hard has it been uh, painting within the wildlands, Erin? I see that you are actually within nature right now. You have trees surrounding you, and there's vines. And it... <laughs> I have this blanket. <laughs> it's yeah. cold in here. Yeah. It, it, it's it, cold is, pretty, it is pretty cold today. Huh. Oh, yeah. Huh. Do you, it, does it help you harness energy? Is it the natural light that gives you an edge? Like... <laughs> yeah, it, it helps not being in a cave. Like having windows is nice. Oh yeah, I forget you're around. You're normally in a cave. Yeah, <laughs> you're a cave woman. I always yeah, forget. Yeah. For you dungeons, do come in with your loincloth dungeons, every now and again. I was in a dungeon, mm -hmm. the basement. <laughs> yeah. Now this year you're cave crazy. Let's not even yeah. talk about hellscape. <laughs> we did that one. We did. We did that one in Florida. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Florida has left the chat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic Aaron joke. No, I think I got it from you. Yeah, because you it's left fine. The chat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what is the Wildlands Aaron Thor paint mix? It's basically you're using it for the stones on uh, on the in the forest and stuff too, right? Yeah. So the it's just kind of two dry brushes, and then you have to fill in the the moss and vegetation. Um, and all of the moss on the Aranthor is the same paint scheme as the forest floor or the swamp floor. So basically, like, it's like if you figure out how to do the rocks, you figure out how to do the dirt and the moss, you pretty much can paint every single biome. Like, we kind of set it up that way so that you could, like, mix and match, have mountains in your swamps, have forests in your mountains. Um, but what was it, was it specific to... No, they're just asking like what the paint scheme was. So that's the, like you're mostly talking about the stone, the stone paint mix there, like with like heart, like bits of the moss. So. Yeah. So it yeah, it's exactly that. It's like doing the stone on the the mountain pieces, and then the moss color is the same colors used for the forest floor, for the moss there. This, AKA this girl, one. what that brush do? This one's a doozy. If I grab the Wyverstone Peak, how long can I expect to be painting? That's the mega pledge for mountain. That's still a lot of pieces. Um, but if you if you if you knock out like a couple a weekend. Yeah, it's like yeah. you don't have to base coat any of it. I mean, except for the Wyverstone, you have to base coat that black. Um, I don't know off the top of my head how many pieces are in it. Tyler. It's a uh, where's Tyler when we, he's in the other room actually. He's still here. Um, but I think actually, it's, I'll ask him. That wouldn't help me. Like it's just. I it's, mean, it's a, it's a three by three table of mountain. It's a whole. It's a whole three by three. Yeah, I think like if maybe you're painting with one other person, I'd say like you could get through it in a month. Like if you're doing it like a reasonable amount, not like a crazy amount. Yeah, I was gonna say the build that was photographed. Me and Aaron painted in like a weekend, probably. Yeah, but it was really yeah, it was really. But it was like, long, long days. days. <laughs> I also remember that it was we only need one part, like two faces of this basically to be really painted, and the yeah. back side of it, it it could be kind of less beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely less time consuming than doing, uh, Dread Hollow. But it's it's still just a lot of pieces. You just got to do it all at once. It like just that, like that's a situation where you go and you do it step by step on a bunch of pieces at once, right? Yeah. You, oh yeah. yeah. You batch like if you were to do it like one by yeah. If you were to do it one by one, that would be insanity. <laughs> you definitely like do all of one step, and then once you're done with that, you just do the next step and so on and so on. Now, what are the names of these berries? That's my question. Like, if we have Wyverstone and we have uh, Dwarvenite. Rebecca the Purple. <laughs> Rebecca the Purple Berries. <laughs> oh, man. That's a good callback. <laughs> we'll never know. They are kind of Rebecca Purple. That's very close to Rebecca Purple. Uh, that settles it. 
it settles it. Not the real Gimpy, who I'm kind of I'm kind of concerned about. That they're no, he's always here. I love him. Yeah, he's impersonating somebody. Uh, just painted some forest scatter for the first time from Caverns. Aaron's tutorial video was great and made it way easier than I expected. I honestly think all of this is very doable with a similar video, which will, we, will be happening. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, Whoa. that is beautiful. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, the bear, these are actually uh, pine cones up here that Eli sculpted. And so I was looking at photos of pine cones, and some of them, when they're at different stages of, like, you know, ripening before they fall off and stuff, they Maturity. do kind of have a slight purpleness to them, so I just sort of exaggerated that on the magical ones. I hear that if you want to get a paint scheme passed, basically, if you mention the word purple, it's kind of like, yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's great. a time with the scheme, and we need Nate to approve it. You just add purple. <laughs> He's like, I love it. <laughs> wow, it's so different. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I don't know what it is, but the, this scheme is just working a lot better for me than the other one. Uh... Do you want to <laughs> assemble the tree? Is it done? Oh. No, there's a... So now, basically, it's almost done. The bulk of the work is done, but there's a bunch of cool details. The vines and the flowers and the stuff. That's right. Uh, around here, so it's almost done. You could, honestly, just do maybe the vines in, like, a green or real fast and, and call it good, especially over a, a large set. But as long as we're here, I'll keep plucking away at those things. Pluck away, little plucker. <laughs> Man, I wish, I wish these were actually berries and not pine cones, because we're getting some good requests or get some good suggestions for names. Uh, ham berries, uh, says Rabbit. <laughs> uh, Grunkle berries, from Method Grunkle Man. Grunkle berries. Yeah, Grunkle berries. The seems Grunkle nice. berry forest. That's the new. We just rename the whole thing. We don't. We don't tell Nate, but we just get into the site. We rename all of it. Oh, it's all Grunkleberry. Grunkleberry. Dingleberries, booberries. No. No to Dingleberries. Come on. Snozberries! <laughs> Tastes like Snozberries. Dry bush, dry bush, and dry bush. It's fast and easy. Yeah, for, uh... I guess it's the thing with a lot of it is, as intimidating as it all seems from, uh... From the outside, I think a lot of this stuff is... Like, you guys purposefully design this to be something that is easy to replicate yeah and also keep in mind when you have a tree like this or the black rat like you're getting a, a big set and only a couple of these as accents so you're not doing a whole forest of this scheme you're doing a couple of these to add some pop you know you're not doing this a bunch it's just a little accent yeah roddenberry <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, are we are you guys basically done with it? It looks like the it looks like Aaron's pieces are done. Yeah, I'm done. I don't know what's taking hamster so long. <laughs> <laughs> well here, let's put a like I say, there's a little bit more vinage and, and flowers and stuff you can do. Which you can see on the piece images on the Kickstarter, but let's get the canopies on here. See where we're at. I love peas. There we go. Give peas a chance. A can of them. Nice. Oh. <laughs> yeah, don't look Saw at your that. legs. Saw your legs. <laughs> don't look at that. <laughs> well, it's only a matter of time before we get suspended. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, dude. He really wants the stream to end and start his own. <laughs> he's, he's trying to... He just wanted to be on the stream so he could bring us down from He's the He's going to start a new website called Hams Only. Yeah. Hams Only? Yeah. Only Hams? <laughs> only Hams. That's what it is. Only Hams. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> or Only Gams. My desk gams. is as cluttered as, uh, hams as it is at work. Hams oh, Gams! No. Yo, we're going to call you the Gamster. That's yeah, what it what's is. What's with that hamster? Like, we have, mo like, I'd say, like, 90% of our desks are just filled with paint and paint support, like, paintbrushes. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, you like, <laughs> like, you start grabbing a few paints for a project, and then you need more and more, and then you start a new project, and suddenly there's, like, a hundred paints on your desk. Will like, you actually yeah. push the tree a little bit further away, or, like, back up a little it's bit? Not, it's not camera. focusing on your canopy is the main thing. There you go. It's just focusing on the trunk. And then when you clean your desk... And when you're starting a new project, you're like, wow, why didn't I do this before? Like, I feel so much, like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So That's what I gotta do on the break. Yeah. 
Oh man. I no, changed the focus the a little bit. Is that good? Yeah, it's yeah, a lot better good. actually. Let's see. Trying to set up a thing here that makes more sense for what we're doing right now. Oh no. Let's do that. Got any questions? Never clean your desk. Bad luck. It's fairly good <laughs> advice. It's bad luck to clean your desk. Bad luck to clean your desk. Yeah. Hmm. All right. That's what I gotta tell myself. Oh man, like my yeah, like my 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 work desk at home is very lucky. Yeah. Incredibly lucky. That's 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 what I would call it. My desk here is lucky. My desk at home is like, ugh. No luck at all. Yeah. Nice highlight on the trunk, looking fine, Mr. H. Ooh, thank you. Painting Mr. painting without pants with hamster. I'm wearing shorts, damn it. Dang it. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. I'm sorry. Only damn. We're gonna have to do a slow motion playback of that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, can we get a replay on that? Did, 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 did somebody, did somebody clip it? Let's commentate it, one. circle it with like red like a football <laughs> yeah. game would be. Play by play. Like and see, this is where he kind of painted. messed up on the whole lineup. So, somebody, <laughs> somebody. I painted have been done to my underwear, I will say that. That's too much. <laughs> somebody, somebody, somebody clip it and send it to customer service. Let's get this man fired. Send it to <laughs> HR. <laughs> oh, Which pieces man. were done in underwear? The entire underdoom, actually. Be quarantine life, right? Right, right. Which ones? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, probably. The world the, needs to know. Probably I'm asking. Probably the bone bloom. Stop. But I was in the office for that. <laughs> Doesn't mean you don't yet. And you. yet. We kept asking you to put on pants. <laughs> the whole time. We had to, like, keep our eyes down. Yeah. It was mask or pants. Pick one. <laughs> Aaron's never been the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. It is man. weird that you wear your shorts as a mask, though. <laughs> Like, I, I love getting two uses out of one item, but, like, uh... Not at the same time. It's an interesting choice. Yeah, I had to buy them a little long, so they are on my legs, but I pull them up over my face. <laughs> <laughs> How does that even work? I, mm, I'm not the person to ask. <laughs> oh, man. It's like a... <clears throat> are the leads going to be removable on the final tree piece? Uh, no, actually. So it's just because these are prototypes that we cast in office. Uh, the final Dwarvenite piece will actually be all together. Uh, I think these are actually factory. These, these are, are the factory yeah. prototypes, but, oh. uh, they, they travel better, I, th I think, is why they keep them separate. Uh, so they don't bust apart in the mail. Yeah, definitely, uh, one of the painters we sent these trees to had to glue it again. Um, mm. but that's purely because, like, this is... Uh, polystone. So the finished yeah. product will be all one piece, very durable. You will not have. Yeah, to it'll be dormant, so it'll it won't break on you. Yeah. Yeah. Because these, these are, I mean, they did these in resin, right? Uh, polystone. Polystone. I'm not sure okay. what what is the polystone, polystone. like mixture. Is that it's, just a it's, thing? It, it's not resin, but it's I would uh, I would say it's similar in like how like rigid it is like it's easy to break in the same way because it is like i don't know it, like it's i think polystone is actually like a stone compound and dwarvenite is too but dwarvenite's more plasticky but i think yeah. polystone's actually like like it feels like a rock it's a lot it it's a lot i don't heavier. know if I that... thought it's a type of resin it is not yeah. sure i'm not ex i'm not 100 sure it, it... i bet it is because like it still pours in the same it's just not the uh, traditional resin yeah, they're not the stuff we use. The white, the white stuff we use here is like it's brittle. Yeah, it it and it doesn't take paint as well as the poly resin. No, the mm, I have a lot I of I, I I know. <laughs> yeah, you gotta so, prime those yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah, those guys are fun to prime. Yeah, if it was <laughs> if it was like black resin or poly resin would be the choice for prototypes because the yeah. white resin just horrible to paint. It does not want to cooperate. It's very Even, heavy for sure. The prototype weighed a ton that you sent me to paint. Oh, Daniel D. Minis is here. Ooh, oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. yeah, the uh, 
there's a there's a number of moving moving these builds around that are made with like these massive builds for games that we've had to move from like Nate's oh, yeah. office to the to the production room so we could do the games and like just moving these tables with like a four by four build of nothing but polystone. It's horrendous. Yeah, everybody's bulked up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently it's resin mixed with powdered stone additives. You know what? Doesn't particularly matter. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna brush off that comment. <laughs> who, who am I? You're like, you it's don't just, need facts. I, I yeah. just, I just, I, I, I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's a lot of science. And this then is like a the safe last zone where we can be as dumb as we want. <laughs> oh, it's just the the last like three weeks had like hit me all at once, and I was like, I don't have the mental right, capacity. Me, to process I, this. I got this. Uh, it's from Michelle, who is one of our sculptors. Oh. Polystone is a compound made up of largely. Oh gosh. Yeah, I told you. I see where she lost you. Yeah, you. Polyurethane three, three, three weeks resin Kickstarter? mixed with powder stone additives that give it added weight and the porcelain or stone-like feel that result in the, the material's name itself. Polystone is durable and highly effective at maintaining a sharp paint finish. Nice. nice. Yeah. I blacked yeah. out. You know I, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Like, you do a Kickstarter for three weeks and then you try to read that and uh, it's man. Good question. How much does this stuff all weigh? Dwarvenite weighs a lot less than the polystone. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got... Full health scheme shipment on the box that says it's 30 pounds and that's that's uh dwarvenite too that's yeah. dwarvenite yeah resin is like easily i would say at least twice the weight if not like it, three, three times three times you think it's three times yeah. i was gonna say it's like oh <laughs> four no, times no, no. i was gonna say <laughs> it's at five. least one and a half times all can right I, hamster can i get six <laughs> go ahead and go put pants on we're gonna put you to bed <laughs> He's crazy. The panster. Yeah, they were riding up a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're high waisted and high uh, high rise. High octane. <laughs> Talk about a high rise apartment. All right. Um, well, thank you for joining the stream. Yeah. So Love dwarvenite. Yeah, so dwarvenite considerably lighter is what I would say. Yeah. Dwarvenite is considerably, considerably lighter. lighter than this. At least, if it's not half as much, it's very close to half as much. It's obviously, it's it's heavier than, like, standard, like, plastic minis. Like, if you got, like, a 3D printed mini. Do you want us to do science for it? <laughs> like, we have, have a the scale. scale right here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, in my pocket. <laughs> no, that's just not, it's not, it's not <laughs> worth it. We start bringing out. Oh, yeah. We can oh, figure it out, oh, we, we, hit, we, hit, we, hit, we hit 48 so hours and three minutes. We should probably get ready for that. Okay. Uh, Paul, your thing is meant to give a little flex to something. Oh. Stop reading comments. Yeah, I gotta stop. Yeah, three point oh eight million. Excellent. Look at my look at my video. This is what I have to say to all the viewers. You ready? Oh yes, do the science. You can do it for the. Oh. 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 That is so now good. do another one. Do another one. Do more. Do something different. Dance monkey. Oh. <laughs> oh look at that. <laughs> Whoa. One more. One again, more. One again, more. Again. Uh, oh yeah. Other no other clapping. other streams I should cover. Sorry, who am I, Nate? Ha! Oh, 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 oh no! Uh. Uh, is the Dwarven Forge Twitch stream going to be live until the Kickstarter ends? So, it's uh, <laughs> not this stream. Uh, so tomorrow at one in the afternoon, <laughs> we're going to be doing. Yeah. Tomorrow one in the afternoon, we're going to be doing one last kind of like big building stream, uh, where we answer questions, show you how pieces work that you might be confused about. That's tomorrow one Eastern. Uh, that night we'll be having a game from uh, Stefan Picorni, our founder at 7 o'clock Eastern. And then on Wednesday, our final day, we'll start streaming at 7 o'clock and we'll go until the Kickstarter ends. We'll be celebrating, uh, reflecting on things, maybe building some stuff. We're still figuring out exactly what that final stream is going to be. We don't even know who all is going to be here for it. We're not going to force people to be here if they want to sleep or whatever. But there will um, be a surprise. There will be a surprise. Now we got to figure out what the surprise is. Oh, I already know what it is. I know what it is, oh, too. Well. Yeah, you do. Do some science. Way Nate. We'll just bring Eli down. It's to the California Raisins. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The California Raisins are showing up to the stream. Uh, They're going to play. You guys the don't know it. Yeah, That's true. Now Nate's going to know about it. He doesn't watch the... Well, All right. Anyways, thank you guys for, uh, for hanging out with us. If you have uh, any uh, questions... You can always hit us up here or uh, in the Discord. We've got people who are, like, always active. It's been a great community. Um, heard that through the grapevine. Oh, crade. Uh, and then if you want to check out... What are you trying to type? What are you trying to type? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, you can, uh, if you want to see more of Hamster's work, you can uh, find him on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, he posts minis and stuff there. 
Uh, if you want to see... What are you trying to awkwardly type? Yeah, and, and if you don't know about the Wildlands Kickstarter, check out the Wildlands Kickstarter. There it is right there. Just look at Wildlands <laughs> on Kickstarter. <laughs> Thank you for watching, everybody. Hey, 48 hours! It's 9 o'clock! Hey! All right, time to... Time, 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 to, time to actually to, work. Time to, yeah, time to really get to it. All right, thanks for coming, cool. everybody. Thank you, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 I'm just going to keep this up until everybody feels really awkward. Bye. Oh.